Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Uh, somebody asked me, in 1 Peter chapter 5, it talks about the church at Babylon. Is it referring to the actual city of Babylon? Or is it a reference to someplace else? Well, let's answer that question by first reading 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 1. Uh, anybody that wants to read along with me, please go to the King James Bible Online.org, O-R-G, and, uh, you know, just read along. I mean, that's actually, believe it or not, that's what I do. I use the um, King James Bible online. I'm not real happy with them right now because uh, they let some people scream out when I started posting uh, scriptures from Jesus uh, saying that was anti-Semitic, and then they would close off the comments. I'm like, really? You quote Jesus and somebody doesn't like the words of Jesus and you're going to close off the comments so that I can't? post the words of Jesus. You're supposed to be a Christian site, really? So, needless to say, I uh, I don't comment on there anymore. So, oh, and I was uh, administrator on Fakebook, and my three-day ban has turned into more than three days, it seems like. So, eh, whatever. Censorship, people. You know, look into the Noahide Laws. And uh, hit my blog. I, uh, I'm going to post links to the King James Bible online and my blog. And you can find out uh, there's a guy named Robert Pickle. He had the Noahide News. And he did a lot of stuff on the Noahide laws and what have you. Really good information. Uh, not everything on that blog that I did is my work. But uh, I thought it was worthy to know. Churches are going to be blindsided when it comes to the uh, Noahide laws. I mean, it's just, you know, people like John Hagee are like, oh, don't worry about that. That's, that's not, that's fake news. Until they're uh, lined up into the um, councils and synagogues where they look at a guillotine. And uh, then they'll say, oh, oh. Oh, I guess it wasn't fake news. So that crazy guy, uh, that crazy chaplain guy was uh, telling the truth. Yeah, no kidding. You don't say. All right, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Now remember, this is Peter. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, not for filthy lucre. Boy, that's uh, that would eliminate 99.99 something or other people, wouldn't it? Uh, by the way, lucre is money, for those of you that don't know it, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind neither as lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. Yeah, don't be like the Pharisees. You know, the Pharisees were like, do as I say, but Jesus said, don't do what they do. Big difference, right? Be an example. Lead the way. Verse 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory... That fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth, resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in in due time, casting all your care upon him, 
for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world, but the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that, ye have suffered a while, make you perfect. After that, ye have suffered a while, make you perfect. Establish, strengthen, settle you. That's right, our suffering in this world is to help make us perfect in the world to come, people. Verse 11. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. By Silvanus, a faithful brother unto you, as I suppose I have written briefly, exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God, wherein ye stand. Verse 13. Here's the punchline. The church that is at Babylon. The church that is at Babylon. Elected together with you, saluteth you, and so doth Marcus, my son. Greet ye one another with a kiss of charity. Peace be with you all that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Didn't know Peter was a, a, a southerner, huh? Peace be with you all. Oh, yeah. That are in Christ Jesus. Amen. All right, so... What uh, is, uh, what are they talking about? Well, I think the answer is in Jeremiah. Now, how many Christians have actually read the book of Jeremiah? For all you older folks out there, most people think, oh, Jeremiah. And then they think of that Three Dog Night song. Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Dum, dum, dum. Yeah. How many Christians have actually read Jeremiah? Isaiah. Ezekiel. Isaiah is so full of prophecy in the New Testament, and they don't even bother to read it. And then they complain, oh, I read the book of Revelation, but I don't understand it. Well, they got a word for that, but uh, yeah. All right, Jeremiah 51. Um, the Lord speaking, verse 9. Jeremiah 51, verse 9. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her, and let us go every one into his own country, for her judgment reacheth unto heaven, and is lifted up even to the skies. The Lord hath brought forth our righteousness. Come, and let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. Make bright the arrows. Gather the shields. The Lord hath raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes. For his device is against Babylon to destroy it. Did you catch that? The Lord hath raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, for his device is against Babylon to destroy it. Because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. See, the Babylonians destroyed the Lord's temple. Uh, and if you don't know who the Medes were, they were part of uh, the Persians. And if you don't know what Persia is, that is modern-day Iran. As a matter of fact, uh, Cyrus and Darius, 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 um, allowed Judah, after 70 years, to return from Babylon, to return to Jerusalem, to rebuild it. And you can read about that in Ezra and Nehemiah. And, um, and those of you that think anybody can be saved, may I suggest you read Ezra chapter 9 about the holy seed mingling themselves with the people of the land. And it was not a pretty picture. 
All right, so God raised up the Medes and the Persians to destroy Babylon. This was hundreds of years before Christ. Hundreds of years. Babylon 50, uh, I'm sorry, Jeremiah 51, 29. And the land shall tremble in sorrow, for every purpose of the Lord shall be performed against Babylon to make the land of Babylon a desolation without an inhabitant. Uh, let's see, verse 37. And Babylon shall become heaps, a dwelling place for dragons, an astonishment, and an hissing without an inhabitant. So yes, what I believe is that the uh, in the New Testament, the church at Babylon is writing of Jerusalem. The Bible alone will tell you who Mystery Babylon is um, in Revelation, if you'll just believe it. You know, you get people say, well, you know, it's New York City, it's the United States, it's Mecca, it's Istanbul, Turkey, it's Russia, it's the Pope in Rome. They'll tell you and use anything except for the Bible. So the physical Babylon was destroyed and never to be rebuilt. But there is a spiritual Babylon, which is end-time Jerusalem from the Bible alone. Revelation 18.21, And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. Well, sorry, the Medes and the Persians destroyed uh, physical Babylon hundreds of years before Christ lived or this was even written. Revelation 18.24, And in her, Babylon... And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Okay. When did Rome slay the prophets? When? Can you show me from the Bible? No, you can't. So Babylon was responsible for the blood of prophets. Revelation 16, 6, For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Now this is one of the plagues where the Lord took the all the water and turned it to blood. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Revelation 17, 6, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. Now this is the whore, okay? This is the whore, not the bride of Christ. I'm going to cover that in my next bride lesson, but I haven't gotten there yet. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Mystery Babylon killed the prophets. So, are we going to read... Um, Commentaries by John Hagee on who Babylon is, or are we going to listen to Jesus? My pick is Jesus. Speaking here in Luke 13, 33, Jesus said, Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. Oh, no, that's wrong, Jesus. You know, the King James translators got it wrong. They should have written Rome there. Wrong. For it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. So if Mystery Babylon killed the prophets, and Jesus said that a prophet cannot perish out of Jerusalem, if A equals B and B equals C, well, then A equals C. Jerusalem is Mystery Babylon. Babylon, period. No way, ifs, ands, or buts to get around it. For it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. Jesus in Matthew 23, 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets. Oh, really? I thought it was Rome. Idiots. 
O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stoneth them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chicken under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. You know why they killed the prophets? Because they didn't like the things that God had told the prophets to go tell them. Go tell them my words. I don't like what they're doing. And if they don't repent, I'm going to destroy them. So what did they do? Kill the messenger. You don't like the message? Kill the messenger. The two witnesses of God that confront the uh, false prophet are mentioned here. Revelation 11 and verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Now, I don't know about you, but maybe your Lord was crucified in, in Rome, not by Rome. It says where our Lord was crucified, not by whom. Okay, the, the two witnesses are going to be in Jerusalem confronting the false prophet and the beast. Okay? And, it's, and the great city is called spiritually Sodom and Egypt, where our Lord was crucified. I don't know about you, but Jesus, my Lord, was crucified in Jerusalem, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, not Rome or in Mecca or in the USA. Not in Istanbul, not Moscow, no. So, are you getting the picture here? I hope so. Do we believe Jesus or commentaries? Most people, oh, I'll believe commentary. Why should I listen to Jesus? What does he know? How about Paul? Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 14, 15, and 16. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets. Who killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets? Even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets. But my pastor, John Hagee, said it was the Romans. Well, your pastor is a liar, if that's what he told you. Now, whether it's an intentional lie or unintentional, something he learned in Bible college, well, that's not for me to decide. But even as they have of the Jews who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us, and they please not God, and they please not God, and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins alway. For the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. Can anybody show me from the Bible alone where Rome or Islam killed the prophets? Please let me know. You know, I, I, I don't claim to be a Bible scholar. Um, I can't find it anywhere. So if anybody's got some information there, please share it with me and I'll, I'll, correct, I'll correct myself. Now, I am no fan of Rome, okay? Especially the Vatican and the Pope. No thank you. I know she's murdered many. John Wycliffe, I've studied his life, a well, not studied, but I've read somewhat of his life. He was burned at the stake at the... Uh, instruction of the Pope of Rome for daring to translate the Bible into the language of the common people so they could cast off the superstition of Rome. Rome's murdered many, but she never killed the prophets. Islam has killed many, but they never killed the prophets either. Neither Rome nor Islam is Mystery Babylon. And then they'll say, well, you know, oh, well, uh, Rome's built on seven hills, and, and, and 
so is Rome. You know, uh, they talk about the seven hills. Well, Jerusalem is also built on seven hills. So is Moscow, communism, that killed millions. Istanbul, which is Islam. And Seattle, Washington, which is Microsoft. Maybe the mark of the beast. I don't know. Matthew 24, 34. Who's Jesus speaking to here? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them ye shall scourge in your synagogues. And some of them ye shall scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel. Wow! Jesus just traced these evil murderers all the way back to Cain. What a coincidence! That upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barchias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. I'm not sure, but I think that's the um, that's possibly John the Baptist's father. Verse 36, Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as the hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. What happened in 70 AD? Rome came and sent the you-know-whos a very strong message when they burned and destroyed Jerusalem and the temple. Destroyed it. Utterly destroyed it. Revelation 18.24 And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Remember, Babylon was responsible for the blood of prophets. Jesus in Luke 13, 33, Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Rome? No. Istanbul? No. Mecca? No. For it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. Matthew 23, 37, Jesus, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Oh, but my pastor says, well, whatever. Maybe you need a new pastor. So, all right, the church at Babylon. Think about that. Mystery Babylon. And oh, by the way, Tel Aviv, uh, according to a gay magazine, Tel Aviv was considered, which was the, uh, was the capital of the Israeli state for many years, was considered the most gay-friendly city in the, United, in the world, according to some gay I think it was, I don't remember the name of it. You can look it up. I think it was Gay Travel or something like that. But Jerusalem is uh, also very, you know, they have gay pride parades too. And so does Tel Aviv. So look up, look up Gay Pride Parade Tel Aviv. T-E-L-A-V-I-V. -V. You'll see many, many, many pictures. They had, I think it was like the 20th, annual or 22nd annual, you know, hundreds of thousands of people. Well, I use that word people loosely. Um, all right. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor belongs to Him and Him alone. In Jesus' name, amen.